Hey, this is Presh Tullwalker. The green dots appear to be moving as a circle, gently rolling inside of the larger blue circle. But what you're seeing is actually not true. This is an optical illusion. There are two parts to this puzzle. First, can you figure out what the true path of each dot is? And second, can you prove why this illusion happens? Give it some thought, and when you're ready, keep watching the rest of the video for the mathematical explanation to the circular motion illusion. So part one of the puzzle is that the true path of each dot is a straight line. If you follow any particular green dot, you'll see it's following exactly a straight line segment and going back and forth. Let me present this to you in another way so that it's easier to follow. I'll give each dot a different color. And now I will set the dots along straight line segments going back and forth. Together, all the dots appear like they're moving like a circle that's rolling around. And in fact, when I remove the lines, it does appear like we have a circle that's rolling inside of the larger circle. But I will set colors to each of the dots' paths, and you'll see that each dot is moving along a diameter of the larger circle. Each dot is actually only moving in a straight line segment, and yet together, all of the dots are creating a circular motion. So we know that each dot is moving in a straight line, but now the bigger question is why does this happen? What's the geometrical explanation? Let's get into the details. We'll start out with a circle that has a radius r, and we have a smaller circle that's half of its radius. Let's let this circle roll inside the larger circle. We're going to keep track of where the green dot goes in the smaller circle. Follow the path of this green dot. If you see the path it traces out, it's exactly a straight line segment that's the diameter of the larger circle. So this is good for illustration purposes, but now we need to prove mathematically that this happens and that it happens for every single point in the smaller circle. This is known as Copernicus's theorem. If a small circle with radius r over two is perfectly rolling in a large circle with radius r, a point on the smaller circle circumference traces out a straight line segment exactly equal to the larger circle's diameter. So we have a large circle with the center point O. We'll consider a smaller circle that has half of its radius. We're going to trace where this point P in the smaller circle traces out. So we have this smaller circle, and we can imagine letting it roll for a little bit. So we now need to see where is this new green point. So we have the circle where the circle has rolled to, and this P prime is the new location of P. We'll denote M as the point at which the small circle now contacts the large circle. So what we want to prove is we want to prove that P prime and P are on the same straight line diameter of the large circle. And an alternate way of saying that is we want to prove the angles MOP prime and MOP are equal. This will imply that the point P prime is on the large circle's diameter. Now, as I've drawn it, it looks like they're all on the same line because that is the case, but we don't actually know that, so we're going to have to prove that. So here are the steps to doing that. 
So the first part is that because point P moves to P prime, the arcs MP and MP prime have the same length. Next, since the small circle's radius is half of the large circle's radius, the angle size of arc MP prime is double that of arc MP. Furthermore, since angle MOP prime is an inscribed angle in the small circle, it has half the measure of the angle size of the arc MP prime. So we put all this together and we're going to get the following series of equations. We have the angle MOP prime, which is equal to half the angle size of the arc MP prime. That's by the inscribed angle theorem. Next, we have the angle size of MP prime is equal to two times the angle size of MP, the arc. This is because we have the small circle subtending an arc of the same length as the larger circle with twice the radius. Next, we have the arc MP is equal to the angle MOP. That's because MOP is a central angle of the circle. And then we have the one half and the two cancel out. So we end up with the last equation that's equal to angle MOP. Therefore, we've shown that angles MOP prime and MOP are equal to each other. And that's what we wanted to prove. This means point P prime is on the diameter of the larger circle. So this proof, by the way, will work once you get up to either 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. When you need to go beyond that, you could just imagine that you do the same proof, except it's all reflected across. So it's the other point P double prime on the other side of the diameter. So this shows that when you have a point on this small circle and you trace it out along this rolling in the larger circle, it will always be along the diameter of the larger circle. Did you figure out the illusion? And then did you know why it works? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Hallwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.